Hi, welcome back. And this is class one. What is my vision as an entrepreneur? And again, my name is Stefan Durian. You just saw the introduction for me. And for you guys, we have the slides on the screen so that as I'm going and talking, you're going to be able to see the slides that I'm reviewing with you. Uh, and uh, we're going to go through the course lab, lab that way. Um, so uh, let's, let's go. We're changing to slide two. The purpose of the SET program. Uh, we're going to say this every time with you. And the idea is that we want you to remind, the intention is to remind you that uh, what we're doing for the course. So the intention is to shift and accelerate the launch of your business using sustainable business practices. Again, we're going to cover all of these topics. So if you're not quite sure what I mean by sustainable practices, we'll go into that in detail. The second is that we have a successful business, that you're going to have a successful business. And the third intention is that uh, for you to be a successful entrepreneur. So not only do you have a successful business, but you also have a, uh, you'll be an entrepreneur that creates successful businesses. And you understand the mindset that you need for that and all the moving parts that are involved with making that happen. Uh, th this slide is um, three major parts to our program. The first part is um, the ready circle in the bottom right. And in the ready circle, you have three major components. That's where we're starting the course. Then we go to set, then we go to go. So under ready, we have vision, offering, and sustainability. Those are essentially our first three classes. Then we go into detail and marketing, detail and finance, detail and strategy, and then we go back and forth between that and sustainability and so on. And then the final part of the course is going to be about building your team and stakeholders and presenting or pitching your business idea. So that's the intentions of the course. And the sustainable entrepreneur has to understand these moving parts, understand how everything fits together and integrates it successfully into their business. Okay, the objectives for today are creating the mindset of an entrepreneur. What does that mean? And what kind of a mindset do I need to have to be a successful entrepreneur? The crucial success factors for a successful launch. Um, then the crucial success factors for an entrepreneur. And starting a powerful vision statement. And what do we mean by that? And why is that important? And how do you put one together? And the same about what is your why. We have a why statement that we're going to have you fill out. And that's actually a precursor to your vision statement. But they're all related. We're going to explain it to you in detail as we move forward. And in, by the way, as you're playing Genesis as part of your homework, and you'll see that at the end of this recording, um, there's going to be a section on your why statement and how to put it all together. So um, let's first start talking about the difference between an entrepreneur and a small business owner. What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is essentially not content with the status quo. They have an ambitious drive beyond just surviving. They like taking risks. They like taking risks. Um, they love learning through growing businesses. And they're innovative. They think outside of the box and work. they work on the business. So again, entrepreneurs tend to be, you know, the Elon Musks out there from Tesla and SpaceX, uh, Richard Branson from Virgin Records and Virgin this for that, that and the other thing. They love creating things from scratch. These are successful ones. Steve Jobs from Apple, who obviously is no longer alive, but um, he's const he was constantly creating businesses and he was creating needs for people. Um, uh, Bill Gates, to some degree, you know, um, and so on. There are many, many, many entrepreneurs and um, that are successful. 
And for every successful entrepreneur, there's probably, I don't know the statistics, but at least a thousand that are not successful. Okay. Uh, we're going to help you distinguish and focus on being successful as an entrepreneur. Okay. So based on that, small business owner, well, what's a small business owner? How's, I used to think that they were the same. They're actually very different. Let's talk about it. Um, so small business owners tend to, and there's no, no right and wrong, by the way. So small business owners, and I know some very happy, very successful small business owners, and I also know some very happy, very successful entrepreneurs, and they're different. Okay, so small business owners tend to be uh, content making a comfortable living. You know, I, as long as I'm paying my bills and I'm growing my business or I'm running my business, I'm fine. Okay, stability is not is a key motivator. Hey, you know, I don't want to break the trend. I just want to keep doing things. I don't want to move it forward and on. And grow and expansion are not important. Growth and expansion are not crucial to them. So, hey, I don't need to be the biggest in the world or the best or the whatever. I just need to have my company up and running and I'm fine. Okay, good. They're not outside the box thinkers. Hey, you know, uh, franchises help them not be, you know, to think within the box and, and to focus on what they want to do. Um, they like repetition. They like predictability. They don't usually have to change, uh, have to change their markets um, uh, and so on. And target markets are more general. In other words, who they're focusing on as a customer. Hey, you know, I'm fine with just focusing on uh, women over the age of 40. And you know what? That's going to be my market and I'm staying there. I'm making it up. Okay. Um, and they tend to have employees that help them run the company. Fine. Okay. So, again, entrepreneurs are outside the box thinkers. And small business owners tend to be inside the box thinkers. Now, that doesn't mean you as an entrepreneur don't have some of the small business owner mindsets and habits. That's fine. And they mix and they mingle all the time. And vice versa. Excuse me. And vice versa. But it does mean that your general um, mindset is either entrepreneur or small business owner. I'm bringing this up because it's an important distinction to make when you have a business. Hey, am I building this thing just to pay my rent? Or am I building this thing because I want it to be the best, bam, biggest, whatever in the world, in the country, in my community, whatever it is. Okay. This course is focusing you on entrepreneurship. And if you have labeled yourself or identify more with the small business owner, that's fine. Just know that the course is going to be focusing on helping you grow and expand and think outside the box and whatnot. Use as much of that as you can to build your small business for the course. Okay, so that said, um, there are different types of entrepreneurs. They're not; these are not all the types of entrepreneurs, but these are the key the, the key ones. So uh, the first one, and I'll go through these fairly quickly. Solopreneur is just like it sounds. It's an entrepreneur that runs the company by themselves. Hey, you know what? I'm going to just do this thing on my own. I don't need any outside help. Consultants uh, tend to fit that mold. Uh, mom and pop shops tend to fit that mold. That's fine. Lifestyle support entrepreneurs are those that, hey, I have a lifestyle that I want this business to help me take care of. High, high growth are companies that want to scale and grow as quickly and be the biggest and the best. Um, technology or tech companies are the same. They, they use technology like our company is a bit of tech. Um, we use a fair amount of tech in our company to help um, scale their companies. And social and environmental entrepreneurs tend to focus on uh, businesses and working with communities and helping make an impact or a difference in businesses, I'm sorry, in, in their communities and their stakeholders around uh, in their, in their uh, target market. We're going to go into quite a bit of that uh, in this course and how some of these can work together and grow an even more successful and grow, uh, um, larger company. Okay. So that said, we're, we're, we're cranking here. Um, so these are the, the, um, 
these are the key components that make up a successful entrepreneur. Um, they are the traits of an entrepreneur, the talents, the skills that go into being a successful entrepreneur. So what I want you to do now, and we're going to talk more about this in the actual course, is, or in the class when we have uh, our first class with you guys, um, is I want you to picture an entrepreneur that you really admire. You can use one of the ones that I've mentioned in the past, uh, previously tonight uh, in this recording, uh, or one of your own. So uh, somebody you know, somebody you know of, um, there are so many out there. And just picture one that you really admire, and then what are their traits? So traits are things like, hey, you know, they're detail-oriented, or um, you know, they are, um, they think way outside the box or they're fabulous at building teams around themselves. Those are traits. Talents are, hey, they're phenomenal in public speaking or they really understand marketing or they, they're passionate about their business and so on. Skills are things like, hey, they're good with numbers, they, um, they know how to put together a business plan. They know how to talk to a large audience. You know, those are various skills. So what I want you to do is take a look at your, at, at that entrepreneur that you really admire and then say, hey, what kind of skills do they all, or, you know, what do they have? You know, come up with maybe one or two, maybe three entrepreneurs that you admire and say, hey, what do they have in common? Skills, traits, talents, what do they have both? in common or all in common that, hey, maybe I should have some of those as well. Okay, so I'm going to have you guys start thinking about that. And then in class, we're going to we're going to talk more about that. Okay, so moving on through the slides, um, your business idea. The key to having a successful business is um, uh, the business idea itself is um, all a precursor, everything I just said was a precursor to what is my business idea. So an idea is the what, the whom, the pain. What do I mean by that? Okay, so what is the idea? Whom is it for? And what is it solving is essentially what that means. Okay, so who, who the what is, what's my idea? Like, um, you know, I don't know, Microsoft has... Um, you know what? I'm not going to use a common name. Uh, so you see this. It's a bottle. It has water. Okay. So what is it? It's a bottle. It's a portable bottle. It's something that I take with me. It's refillable. You don't throw it away. That's all the what. Who is it for? Well, that's the second one. Whom? Well, that's for people that don't want to run out of water and they don't want to throw something out or they don't want to have to pay extra to have a bottle of fresh water, whatever that means, um, but they rather have it uh, be something that they can constantly bring with them. And the pain is related to the home, and that is, what is the pain? I'm going to keep holding this up. So what is the pain that the entrepreneur has? Well, I mean, I'm sorry, the target audience has. Well, the pain is well, you know, I'm. what if I get stuck on a subway and I'm really thirsty and I can't get something? Or the pain is I'm at the beach and um, I need to make sure I always have water with me. Or, hey, my business, I'm always talking and presenting. God forbid I, I get thirsty and I, I can't talk because I'm, th you know, that kind of thing. So that all becomes part of your business idea. So... Um, often entrepreneurs start with an idea for a business. Great. Now, for this course, I would like you to think way beyond having a, a having a restaurant, having a store, shop, uh, a bar. Those are things that I do not want you guys to be coming up with. I want you to come up with something much more innovative than that. I want you to start thinking about something that's exceedingly unique, not just in your community, but something that, as far as you know, you've never seen it done before. So restaurants are out, bars are out, 
um, in your dorm, little businesses in your dorm, probably out, unless it's exceedingly unique. Um, okay, so that said, uh, often entrepreneurs start with an idea they have for a business. If you don't have one yet, that's fine. Fill it out here. Um, I mean, you're going to start working on it here, and you're going to skip uh, the next sec this section if you don't already have an idea. But just watch it and start thinking about it and saying, okay, what's my idea going to be? Okay, great. So business idea is something that you sell to whom you sell it to and uh, the pain that your customer has, which is what this slide says. Examples are uh, a bowling alley. We had a student a few years ago at one of our schools that had a bowling alley and a high school, uh, a, high, a bowling alley for high school students, and uh, or an uh, acupuncture business for women is another example, or an app that helps baby boomers get a taxi. Those are examples. So I want you to start thinking about your business idea now. If you already have one, great. Um, I want you to keep going with it. Okay, so moving on, um, moving on, sorry, pressing a button here, we're continuing to record, okay, good. Um, next slide, okay, uh, what goes into successful entrepreneurs? These three things, I'm going to explain each one of these. The, the key here is that, yeah, of course, having an MBA or, or knowing business or being strong in numbers or financials or marketing or, or having a phenomenal Rolodex or starting with a lot of money or access to capital, awesome, great. You know, those are exceedingly helpful, absolutely. And without these three, you're, uh, I don't care how you define success, these are going to be exceedingly uh, running a business, growing up, being a successful entrepreneur is going to be exceedingly difficult without these three, if not impossible. In fact, when you look at your entrepreneur uh, idols that you've been thinking of, I want you to look at these three components to see if they have them. The first is passion. What do I mean by passion? Passion is something that you're excited about, that you can't stop thinking about, that you feel is going to be the solution to whatever it is that you are solving. And it's something that you just love doing. So it could be an athlete that loves uh, basketball and they're creating an app to help improve your game. But they love basketball, they're passionate about it, and that's how they started their business. Um, conviction is, conviction is, are things like Hey, I mean, well, conviction is essentially where you may not have any idea how you're going to be successful and you know you're going to be successful. So what that looks like is uh, we've all have seen children learn or babies learning how to crawl. They crawl, or I'm sorry, learning how to walk. They start with crawling. They get up, they take a step, they fall down. They get up, they fall down. They get up, they take two steps, they fall down. And so it goes. Now imagine that baby saying, you know, this walking thing is way too difficult. I'm going to stick to crawling. Conviction is, uh, conviction is where they don't know how they're going to learn how to walk, and they're just going to do it until they figure it out. Entrepreneurs, the combination of passion for, you know, in this the example I just used, the walking, the baby wanting to know how to walk, because big people learn how to walk. That's their passion and conviction is, I have no idea how to do it. I'm going to just crawl, walk, and see what happens. Okay, so it's the combination of those two that creates successful entrepreneurs. The third one is adaptability. What I mean by adaptability is knowing how to pivot. Knowing, okay, what part of my business, you know what, the market doesn't want it, bad idea, I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to do this instead over here. Now, with passion conviction and adaptability, you can create a very successful business. So, um, vision. Let's talk a little bit about visions and vision statements. What defines a business vision statement? A future state never meant to be achieved. So a vision is something that's never meant to happen. Microsoft. We all know Microsoft. 
Microsoft in the, I want to say Bill Gates in the late 70s, early 80s, went, how he raised money and how he built his company was on his vision, his company vision. And it was, he, he his vision, and I'm paraphrasing it, I'm not getting exactly right, but it's essentially having a computer on every desk in the world. That's a huge vision. Now, put yourself in, if you were alive back then, put yourself in the 1970s when he was sitting at uh, investors or meeting with a potential client or talking to a potential employee or something, and that was the vision. And you're like, whoa, that's huge. I want a piece of that. That's the vision, okay? So he didn't expect to make that happen. He was just focusing on it, and that was his intention. Okay, great. So that being said, he uh, now um, fast forwarding to I don't know, maybe ten years ago. It's my guess, but a while ago, uh, should, um, uh, Microsoft had to change their vision because they came really close to achieving it, having a computer on every desk. So I don't know what it is today, but they started off with a computer on every desk. And that was the vision, and it helped all the people in the company focus on, okay, this is what we're building, and this is what we're going towards. And it helped them stay focused and passionate and and, and moving the company forward. Uh, a couple other examples. Um, acupuncturist. Her vision is healing humanity. She doesn't expect to heal humanity through her acupuncture, but that's what she's focusing on. She's building her company around healing humanity so that when she talks to clients, when she talks to employees, when she's looking to raise money, if she needs to raise money, she says, hey, my business is all about helping to heal humanity. And that's what we're focusing on. So if you have an idea for a business that has nothing to do with healing humanity that you think my acupuncture business should take a look at, not interested. But Chinese medicine heals humanity, so I'm interested in Chinese medicine. Okay, so that helps her stay focused and move away from the distractions that other components uh, and other people might bring her as she starts to grow her business. Okay, another example is Shift Group, my company. Um, our vision is a sustainable planet transformed by entrepreneurs. We don't expect our company to heal our planet through entrepreneurship, but we do expect that that's going to be our focus. So that we're going to, and you're going to see a lot of this as you're going through the course. But the intention is that we're going to train you guys to come up with solutions and ways to run a company that don't destroy our planet and communities, but actually restore them. Okay, so that said, um, Sorry, my light just flickered. I'm back. Um, so what's important and how do you create one? Um, I want you to start thinking about what is my vision for my company going to look like and how do I go about putting that together for me? Okay, we're going to talk a lot about that in class when we have class. Um, I want you to not just look at this from a place of making money or getting an AA in the class, but come from a place, you can't really see my hand, but come from a place that is your heart. Where is your passion for this? I keep saying that, but man, I can't tell you how many um, investor pitches I've seen and investor meetings and investors and um uh, angel groups and uh, venture capitals, and we're going to talk a lot about what all those things mean. And I can't tell you how many times I've been to these events and investors say, not interested because the passion wasn't there. I'll explain why that's important when we get to it. And when you start looking at those model entrepreneurs or idol entrepreneurs that you have in your life, um, you're going to see that they all are passionate about what they do. Sorry about light. Okay, so that said, um, why do you do what you do, and what is the difference if you want to, What's the difference you want to make with your business? So, okay, great. So, my passion is on entrepreneurs, empowering them to solve the world's biggest challenges. Okay, so that's my passion. That's what the team that I brought around me their passion as well. 
So who has a vision? Uh, so, so I want you to put your visions together and we're going to be sharing them in class. And we're going to be taking that vision to a deeper level. But just know that start thinking about it because in class we're going to go deeper into it and we're going to get feedback with, uh, we're going to give feedback in your, uh, with your colleagues and your professor. Okay, let's talk about another very, very important uh, moving part. And that is your why. Why you do what you do. And this is different than a vision statement. A vision statement, uh, which is, all, well, you know, I'm going to take a step back. Uh, you have vision statements, and you have purpose statements, and you have mission statements. So we've all heard those before. Now, a mission statement is different than a vision statement. So again, a vision statement is designed to never be achieved, but it's something that I'm passionate about and it's what the company is going to be doing. A mission statement is steps to make the vision happen. So a computer on every desk, well, we're going to start, you know, Microsoft's a computer on every desk. Well, we're going to start with putting together an operating system that controls the computers. Then we're going to start introducing programs and products that run on that operating system and so on. So it was all around a computer on every desk. Well, how do you make people want to have a computer on their desk? Well, you got to have things that they want to use on their computer, which is Word and Excel and blah, 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 right? PowerPoint and so on. Well, so that's a mission statement. Now, a purpose statement is what you're all about and what's the purpose of the company. And that's related to the vision statement. We're not going to talk more about that. But just know that a vision statement is designed to create the direction and the future of your company. And it's not necessarily something that's uh, intended to be accomplished. It's just something you're focusing on. Okay, now a why statement is different. A why statement actually happens before the vision statement. Why you do what you do. What are you most passionate about? And why in business does that matter? Who cares? And why would they care? And why that's important to build that into your company and your vision. It's the core of what you really believe about the world, about your life, about what's most dear to you and important to you. But it's greater than you. It's not you. It's not, I want to be wealthy or about me, me, me. It's about something much greater than you. So that other people, and you're going to see a video on this, not now, but uh, part of your homework in playing Genesis, you're going to see a video about this. Um, uh, it, so the video is about that it's greater than you, that that's what builds teams. And there's an argument, there is a powerful argument that why statements is actually what builds your company. It's built my company, Shift Group. We have a tremendous amount of talent working in my company because of our wise statement, primarily. Some examples. Okay, so Apple, Apple Computer. Um, what they do is they have beautifully designed, easy to use, and user-friendly technology. That's why they do what they do. They want to buck the trend. They want to work uh not work with the status quo they want to make everything in a completely powerful simple and beautifully designed way and in this video you'll see how apple has built what the apple has built around that my company our why statement if you will it's just you're going to create a statement and when you see the video it'll be a lot more clear to you but um, our why statement is essentially um, and this is what we built our company on. The fastest way to stop destroying our planet and communities and actually restore them is by showing people how to make money doing it. Again, the fastest way to not only stop destroying our planet and communities, but actually restore them is by showing people how to make money doing it, which is what we're doing with you guys. We're showing you how to make money running sustainable businesses. Okay, so from that, we brought in the talent and the expertise and the money and, the, and everything, our team and our customers, because of that. Okay, so 
um, that's a why statement, and that's how everything is built. Okay, so now we're going to um, review what we just covered. Um, we started off by talking about the entrepreneurial mindset. What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? The entrepreneur types. You know, we have, you know, the solo entrepreneurs all the way to the sustainable and social and nonprofit entrepreneurs. That's the different types. And how are they different and how are they related and how you can have some of one and some of another. And you don't have to be just a technology entrepreneur or a high growth entrepreneur or a lifestyle. You can be a mixture of those. Okay. And then successful entrepreneurs you know, picturing what made them successful and passion, conviction, and achievability is the other one. Um, so passion, conviction, and um, adaptability, I'm sorry, adaptability um, are crucial. So being passionate about what you do and convinced you're going to be successful, you may not know how you're going to be successful, but you're going to be successful. And adaptability, meaning that you pivot, you can change, you can flip it, you can do this piece instead of the whole thing, you know, and you're okay with that because, damn it, I'm going to build my company and I'm so passionate about making the overall vision happen. Okay, great. The power of a powerful vision, why that's important and where that comes from. And then your why statement, we briefly talked about the importance of a why statement and how to make that happen and everything that goes into, uh, you know, what you believe and how to attract other people to believe what you believe. Again, we're, I'm going over it a little bit here because we constantly are going to be revisiting it and building it into your business model as we go forward. Okay, so your assignments. Uh, you're going to draft, and after you, so you're going to play Genesis. I recommend you play Genesis now that you've watched the video. Play Genesis level one, and in that, you're going to see the, uh, I think it's a 17 minute video. It's a long video, but it's from, it's, I think, one of the top three or four all-time TED Talk videos. If you know TED Talk, it's I think it's TED.com, I think T-E-D. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, they've the, that, that particular video that you're going to watch has probably, I'm guessing, seven or eight million views at this point. I don't know. Um, but uh, Simon Sinek, who teaches the uh, why is much more important than how and what you do, and it's actually why you do it that does the selling of your company or your business or your product or uh, your concept. And he uses business and non-business examples. Anyhow, so it's a 17-minute video embedded in Genesis. And then there's quizzes in Genesis on the video. So pay attention to the video because we're going to ask you questions afterwards about it. Then you're going to... Um, so you, uh, and part of your EM1 is going to be what is my why statement. And then part of your EM1 is, okay, what is my vision statement also? And these are slightly out of order, but the third thing is playing Genesis. GenesisTheGame.com is where you can go to play level one. Play it, I'm going to go back to the other slide, uh, play it up to level one, um, Red Rocks. And Red Rocks is at the very last part of the, um, of the game. So you can play when you say entering Red Rocks, you can just stop at that point because we're going to be doing that in class so uh, or our equivalent of it in class. So uh, play up to level one's Red Rocks and that way you'll watch the video, you'll learn about entrepreneurship and the different types of entrepreneurs and so on and small business owners and so on and why that's important and it'll help you reinforce some of the things you've been learning here. Um, and then I will see you or, or the professor will see you in class and we're very much looking forward to hearing what your idea is and how we're going to actually go from idea to in a very short period of time you're going to be pitching it to the world okay I will uh, the professor and, and or I will see you in class very soon mm -hmm.